You see the most beautiful sunset you've ever seen. My name is Alice Sin and welcome to Alice's Shelf. Yeah, today is a good day. We'll talk about one of my favorite Brazilian short stories called Come Watch the Sunset by Ligia Fagundes Teles, who just died earlier this year. But she's still brilliant, so whatever. Let's talk about the plot. What happens in Come Watch the Sunset is we have this couple, Ricardo and Rachel, and they used to date, but now Rachel's dating someone new, a new man who has a lot of money. And Ricardo has no money at all, and he's living in this horrible pension and everything. And this already says a lot about our characters, because we know that Ricardo has no money, and that probably Rachel left him because of that, because now she's with a man who does have money. What does that tell us about Rachel? So Ricardo begs her for a last date and she finally surrenders to it. But it has to be somewhere they will never be found and somewhere her husband-to-be could never find. So he brings her to this place. They pass by a group of kids playing and they reach an abandoned graveyard. And Ricardo says something that I love, which is that the graveyard is so abandoned, even the ghosts have left. There is not a human being or a ghost left there. And she's like, girl, did you have a better place to take us? I mean, graveyard, really? And he's like, well, we had to go somewhere we couldn't be found. You're welcome. So they go to this graveyard and they're talking and everything and she says that she has to marry the man because he has money and everything and he has to move on from her, it's been a while. So she's like, can, can we leave? I don't want to be here, I mean, I've had enough. And he's like, no, I told you, you watched the most beautiful sunset you've ever seen. And they keep on talking and keep on walking until they reach this um, mausoleum. And he tells her to go in because it is beautiful and it's where all of his family has been buried. So she goes in and she's like, so is this your family? I mean, cute and all, can we go home? And then she realizes that, that that's not his family because people there were dead since the 18th century. So she's like, bitch, what are you doing? And then he closes the gate behind her and she can't get out of the mausoleum. And she's like, hey, stop playing with me. Let me out. And he's like, oh, see, Rachel, I can't. You have to watch the most beautiful sunset ever with me. You abandoned me. And she's like, you know what, Ricardo, I've had enough. I don't want to play this game. Just let me go. We've had our last day and now I want to go home. Stop playing with me. And he just closes her in there. And she starts yelling and starts yelling and everything. And then he says, you know, when the sun hits a certain point, some freckles of sunlight come in through this crypt, through this hole in the wall. And there you see the most beautiful sunset you've ever seen. And he keeps, she keeps on screaming and trying to get out and he just leaves, walks back downhill and passes by the kids playing. So let's talk about it. First, let's talk about our setting. We have a graveyard, which already sets the tone pretty well, doesn't it? I love this word, graveyard. You know, it's like a yard filled with graves beautiful okay uh, so we have a graveyard an abandoned one so look at how lonely the soul feels because it has been abandoned by all human beings and by all ghosts and also the choice of the sunset 
works as a metaphor to Rachel's life because the sunset is the moment the sun is about to die. Darkness is here. And we're talking about the end of her life. She's living her sunset. Now let's talk about the names, Ricardo and Rachel. Look at those strong R sounds. In Portuguese, they're even stronger because it's a Brazilian tale, so their names are Ricardo and Raquel. Ricardo, Raquel, ha, ha, ha. Look at how strong this is. It's harsh, it's ha. It's not a fa, 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 fa. It's a ha. Like we talked on the Raven about the repetition of or that helps to build on this somber tone. The repetition of an R sound, Ricardo, Raquel, helps to build this harshness to the story. So it's very interesting that she chose those names. And let's talk about them. So Ricardo is at first described as an old, very thin and weak man. And then he turns out to be very Machiavellic because he plans the whole thing. He knows what he's going to do. He's plotting to kill her. He's out for revenge. So even though he looks like this very kind and okay man, he's actually evil. And Rachel, on the other hand, is a bitch. She broke up with Ricardo because he didn't have any money. And now she's out with this new husband because he has a lot of money. And, well, turns out she's dying. So, she's a bitch. She broke up with Ricardo because he didn't have any money. And now she has this new husband who has money. And she's all dressed up. She even says, like, I wouldn't have worn heels or this fancy clothes if I knew we were going to a graveyard. So, she already expects things to be fancy and all. So, this tells us a lot about who these two people are. This is what we call exposition. It's when we learn about our characters in an indirect way. And the fact that all ghosts and human beings have left also tells us that Ricardo planned this really well. Because he's taking them somewhere where she will never be found. He orchestrated this so that no one will notice her absence. And this is very clear when we have the children playing. When they're going towards the graveyard, they pass through a group of children playing. And when Ricardo's coming back alone, he passes through the group of children playing. So what he did, Rachel's death, had no effect. He knew exactly what he was doing. And we also have some foreshadowing to what's gonna happen. Not only throughout the fact that the place is completely abandoned, but also when he says, you watch the most beautiful sunset you'll ever see, which she does, it is the last sunset she'll ever see. So we have a small foreshadowing happening there, but especially when he says, are you sure no one knows where you are? And she thinks that it's only because no one can find them out, so she made sure that nobody would know where they are, but it's actually because no one should know where he killed her. So, this is a very short story. It's like six pages, but Ligia Fagunstelis is so brilliant. I recommend it to anyone. And it is Brazilian contemporary literature. So remember, if you're invited to a date in the graveyard, just, you know, don't go into a mausoleum or something. That's the moral of the story, I guess. <laughs> well, thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe, like, and share the video with everyone you know. I hope y'all have a great sunset this evening. And remember, life's a sin.